Hello there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Creativity, Montessori, and the Meaning of Life. I'm going to start this morning with a rethinking of the Lord's Prayer, and it's based on uh, Eugene Peterson's um, version in his devotion called Solo. And the reading of the Lord's Prayer is coming out of the New Living Translation. Matthew 6, 7 through 13. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God this loving, you can pray very simply, like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best, as as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Christ asks us to come simply, directly, and honestly before God. Asking for what we need, not beating around the bush, and not forgetting praise alongside requests. To the disciples Jesus spoke to, addressing God as Father and asking Him for three square meals might have seemed irreverent. What does it truly mean that God is your Father? How does that affect the way you speak to Him? What do you think Jesus meant when He talks about prayer warriors with formulas? Try praying first using these words provided by Jesus and then adding your own. Keep it short, simple, and direct. Skip the, quote, Christianese, unquote, that creeps in. It's just you and God. This reading comes from a book called Crushing, God Turns Pressure into Power by T.D. Jakes. I didn't know that I was being crushed, that I was in a process ordained by the master, and that there was a purpose behind it all. The pressure God was applying to me was forcing my blood, sweat, and tears into the vision he had given me in order to give life to my future. Coming from a family of entrepreneurs, I knew that nothing in my life would simply be handed to me. But it became all too apparent that I was not going to receive all that God had for me without a fight. The enemy had shown his fangs and sharpened his claws in preparation to do me in. He saw my vulnerable state and tried to create an avalanche of turmoil to trip me, turn me, and torture me away from what I knew was my divine destiny. Although I knew about such obstacles from a cognitive, theoretical perspective, the reality left me battered, bruised, and bloody. And I know my experience reflects what we all face in some way. In this crushing process, the enemy of your soul will send obstacles your way in order to convince you to abandon what God is doing in your life. Things you could not imagine will spring out of nowhere. People you thought you knew will disappoint you, fail you, betray you. Circumstances and events that seem to have no rhyme or reason will suddenly become the poetry you are forced to recite each day as the script of your life. I've been in ministry for over 40 years, and you'd be shocked at the problems and pressures that tried to ruin me, run me off, and sentence me to a life of mediocrity.
I'd like to read to you a few essays that I wrote in my book, Your Creative Peace, Find and Deepen Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. Are you open? I remember when I participated in my first postcard swap. The postcard was supposed to have sewing as part of its accoutrements. I did not know how to sew. I did not even know the official size of a postcard, but I wanted to try. I remember when I finally worked up the courage to go buy an official canvas replacing the wood and paper, which I had grown so attached to working on, because I felt less pressure working on less expensive mediums. A 16 by 20 canvas seemed so huge in my mind. I was so used to working on 5 by 7 paper, and I did not know if I had the courage to fill that space. The funny thing is that when I finally had it in my hands, it did not look as big as I envisioned. In fact, it looked quite manageable. I remember when I decided I really wanted to try writing every day. I did not even know what I would write about. My life was boring me. How could I follow the advice of so many to write what I knew? I felt like after all my family and I had been through with our financial situations and my husband being back to back on deployments, all I was capable of doing was simply maintaining the status quo. Change is coming. So the interesting thing about drastic change is that life tends to make a fork in the road. Do you know what I mean? Those times when you're going along and you are learning some lovely things about yourself and you're feeling pretty contented, that place where you could have had a nice experience with a new endeavor and it becomes little else and you're okay with that or the change becomes the next phase in your life funny how as I was typing this I'm anticipating meeting with a friend from seminary for lunch four years ago we were taking a class together where the challenge was to embark on a spiritual discipline for 30 days the challenge I felt God pressure, pressing onto my heart to create art for 30 days. At the time, the only medium I perceived art to be was drawing. And I knew one thing, I did not know how to draw. The exercise was painful. Every day I would wait until the very end of the day to try to come up with something. I did not even attempt people. I mostly tried to stay in my what I thought were safe spaces, uh, leafless trees or silhouettes of women. And when I finished, I turned in the work, and I was finished, so I thought. And here I am today, fully embracing an artistic life. Something to consider. I received a telephone call when I least expected it. This telephone call represented my fork in the road. I wasn't ready. At least I didn't feel ready. But I think I wanted to be ready. And I just put all this time and energy and money into building a website. I was still at that place in my circle of friends where they were still kind of unsure what it was I was doing with my time. Now, even as I type that, I think, is that really true? Did my friends really not understand the necessity of what looked like sudden changes? It really is true. I will say there was about two people in my group who knew I was pursuing this creative life as more than just a hobby. I was feeling it as a life calling. My life calling. So here's the series of events. I'm preparing myself for the day, and as I'm brushing my teeth, a thought crossed my mind. What was the point of making a website? You see, about six months prior, I poured everything I had into a website, and then I moved to Germany to live with my husband for seven months because of his deployment. In other words, I invested time and money into something and then had to let it sit for an extended period of time because I was out of the country. 
Why did I even waste my time creating a website? And immediately, I felt sunk. What a stupid idea. Why did I do all that? I prayed and asked God to help me to see if I am off track. I asked for a release from this feeling, this obsession that I had about it. And then a call came. The call was from a friend who even in the beginning stages of my transformation, I had shared this new journey. She lives in another state, so I felt like I was safe to have someone distance from the changes going on. I would send her my note card designs and I would send her things like uh, yoga bags that I would crochet. And um, I think I mentioned the website a couple times. Well, the person I'd been confiding in, this is the person who called. And she said these words. For some reason, I felt this strong urge this morning to check out your website. And you know what? I love your drawing style. I was thinking about writing a yoga kids book, and I was wondering if you would like to create a couple of drawings for it. Praying by Mary Oliver. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot. Or a few stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together. And don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest. But the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you'd like to find more of my work, you can check me out on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren, N-O-R-G-R-E-N, or under U-B-U for life.